Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about some digital art tips I wish I knew when I was starting out. This video was kindly sponsored by Lenovo and Microsoft. This is the Lenovo Slim Pro 9i, a brand new laptop with Windows 11, designed for creatives. It has a powerful yet slim design that allows you to create from anywhere, 9 hours of battery life, and it has NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series graphics, which speeds up software previews and exports, so when I'm doing stuff like video editing, or working on like a really big illustration, it helps speed that process up and give me less waiting time, keeping me more productive. And speaking about speeding things up, that is what my first tip is all about. Using keyboard shortcuts is the number one way that I have found to speed up my own art process, and I think it works for most people, regardless of what kind of digital art you're doing. Now, a lot of people do use Control z that's one shortcut I think everyone is pretty used to, it's just undo, but uh, I find that if you get stuck with just that one, or just that one and like one other, you're missing out on a opportunity to make your whole process much faster and smoother by just adding a couple more. Now, some of my absolute favorites include Control y which is redo, Control x which is cut, Control c which is copy, Control v which is paste, and control T for transform. Basically anything you find yourself doing more than like 25 times per drawing or just very frequently, you should learn the keyboard shortcut for. It will save you so much time. Just try to take notice of the things that you're having to stop drawing for and pick up your mouse and actually like click into the menu for. And if you can just do a keyboard shortcut for those things that you're doing often, you might be surprised at how much time it actually saves you and how much more smooth and fun your art process becomes. One really cool thing you can do specifically with this laptop because it has a touch screen is also use gestures, which is another time-saving technique. You can do a variety of different gestures by touching the screen, uh, such as going between programs, pinching to zoom, that sort of thing. It can really help make the whole process a little more organic and a little more fun in my opinion, um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. For my second tip, this is something that I think a lot of people actually forget about and it's something that I suffered from a ton, but that is remembering to calibrate all your different screens before you start drawing. This has been such an issue for me throughout my entire digital art journey. When you're drawing on paper or you're painting, you don't have to worry about this, but oftentimes what you're seeing in your screen tablet on the computer that you're drawing on, as well as in my recording software, for example, they're all showing different colors, different contrast levels, and that can be really frustrating when you're trying to just make it look right, make it look the way that you're picturing it. Um, now, if you're using something that's calibrated well, and the colors look rich and bright, and the contrast is good, um, and the darks are really dark, and the highlights are really bright, you're going to have a much more harmonious uh, experience trying to color and shade and that sort of thing. I somewhat famously ran into this problem when I was making my Percy Jackson video and I accidentally made Percy's skin like actually green instead of an olive skin tone because the tablet I was drawing on was calibrated wrong and it was looking different to me than it actually looked in real life. Uh, you can kind of see what I mean here. So you can see how on my tablet, it, the colors look different than they do on the laptop. See, the laptop has these really rich and true colors, um, whereas on my tablet, I feel like I would have to put in a much brighter color to get the same look. Um, that's because the uh, tablet is not 100% calibrated right. So I would want to try to match it as close as I can to the laptop um, in order to get a more accurate coloring experience. This laptop has a 3K mini LED screen, which is super color accurate, which obviously as an artist or anyone working in any visual medium on the computer would really benefit from or appreciate. Another great thing about the screen is that you can go out into the sunshine and it doesn't impact the vibrancy or the accuracy of the colors on the screen, which allows me to work outside, um, which I really love to do, especially in the summertime. So yeah, in short, make sure to check your colors before you start. My next tip to you is to pick out the right programs for you. Truthfully, when I first started out in digital art and as well video editing, I pretty much just picked the first and most accessible program to me and I stuck with it for years. And a lot of these programs that I first started out with ended up not really being a right fit for me and they ended up slowing me down. So if you're just starting out in digital drawing, audio editing, video editing, I highly recommend you try out a lot of different software 
software and find one that really suits you, that really works for you before you pick one and get really used to it. I actually tried out some new programs when I got this laptop, including the Microsoft Journal app for brainstorming content ideas and a video editing program that I'd never tried before called ClipChamp. It was incredibly easy to use, and I highly recommend trying it out if you're new to video editing. It has a whole bunch of templates that make things really beginner friendly uh, for vertical video, like for TikTok or horizontal for YouTube. It's already kind of set up, so you can just jump right into creating. I also like how drag and drop it is. You can also use Microsoft's screen recorder and the snipping tool if you wanna record the screen while you're drawing the way that I do for my videos. ClipChamp can also record your webcam and your screen in tandem, which I think is really cool. My next tip kind of works for all different types of artists, but especially digital artists, and that is knowing when to take a break and step away. Whether you just need a mental break and can do something like gaming or watching your favorite movie, or if you need to actually go outside and step away from everything, it's really important to know when to stop and stop looking at your art because it's really easy to lose objectivity and especially when you're getting frustrated, it's just going to make you feel worse and it'll make the end product of your work worse. So it's something that I highly recommend and I think is one of those under-encouraged uh, art skills. You actually get three free months of Xbox Game Pass with this laptop, um, so you can basically do console gaming on your computer. Playing games is one of the main ways that I de-stress, especially when I'm all fed up with the art I'm working on. So those were just a couple tips and bits of advice that I wish I knew when I was starting out with digital art. Thank you again to Lenovo and Microsoft for sending me the Slim Pro 9i and sponsoring this video. I really enjoy this laptop. I like that it's so lightweight, like I can just slip it into a bag and take it to a cafe, and it doesn't have really obnoxious loud fans, which has been my experience with a lot of laptops I've used in the past. One of the biggest things for me about it is actually that screen. The intensity of the colors and the richness of like the contrast on screen makes a huge difference when you're doing something visual, especially if you're going to be working on it for long hours. The long battery life is really important to me too. I have a tendency to forget chargers when I go places with my laptops, so being able to know that it's not going to just quit on me after like an hour of working on it is a huge relief to me. If you're a creative and you're in the market for a laptop, you should definitely check it out. You can find the Slim Pro 9i on B&H and online and Costco website. Check out my links in the description to learn more. Thank you for watching till the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thank you to my wonderful patrons, including Stan Soup, Liddy Savior, Roro, Birds on a Wire, Emmy Lightning, Rayon, Sporkle Matt, Brandon Stark, CB, Lucy Amajiki, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, Raven's Crow, Sasala, Tea Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, Kadaria, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Cutie Pie, Ruin Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, blah 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 blah.